Hi everyone, I hope you're all keeping safe and well. Today we are catching up with the golden girl of England netball. She is the player you definitely want under the net when the game is on the line and the buzzer is about to go all the way from Sydney, Australia, the one and only shooting sensation, Helen Housby. Hi. Helen, thank you so much for joining us. How are you? I'm good. I'm great. It's actually, it's not a bad place to isolate. The sun's been shining today. So yeah, I'm doing good. Hairdressers are still open. I actually got my hair done today. Yeah, hairdressers are still open. Um, a lot of places are closed. Um, but yeah, there is still, you know, some things still going on. I was able to go and get physio the other day. Um, obviously, they're taking all the precautions and everything, but it's probably not as strict as the UK at the minute. I have to say that hairdresser news has made me so envious. My roots, I'm kind of like sitting tilted back because they are so bad. Um, so what does a, a day in lockdown look like for you? Have you got a bit of a routine? Yeah, I think it's quite important to keep a routine. I think as an athlete, um, we're used to being told where to be, you know, what we're doing every day and having a structure. And it's very different not being around the team and not being around the girls every day. Um, but yeah, we're still training. and I think we're lucky to have a good club in the Swifts and they've provided us with pretty much a full home gym. Uh, we've got a squat rack and trap bars and bikes, everything that we could need. They gave us a netball post um, and a rebound a little trampoline thing. So yeah, we're doing a lot of training and getting out and running. But yeah, it's kind of been nice to, to catch up with family members that I haven't really spoke to. I think I'm speaking to my mum more than I would if I was actually living in the same house as her. Um, and yeah, just trying to keep the mind busy um, and stay as healthy as possible. You sound really upbeat about, about everything. You, the Sun Corp was, was due to start at the beginning of May. We know that's been pushed back to potentially the end of June, although they, they will be reviewing that later on in May. Are you enjoying this extra time off or are you really itching to get back out on court? Oh, I mean, obviously, I'm, I'm definitely itching to get back out on court and I miss training with the girls. And obviously, it's disappointing that we're not going to be playing as soon as I'd like because, um, you know, that is ultimately why we do all this training and this is going to be the longest pre-season ever. But yeah, I think it's nice to kind of refresh and use this time in a positive way, learn a new skill, do something. Um, yeah, it's been, it's been not too bad. You chose to stay in Australia then when, when sort of travel restrictions and lockdowns were starting to be announced. Quite a few of the other English players out in Australia chose to flow home. Was it a tricky decision to make and why did you choose to stay out in Oz? It was. It was a really tricky decision, especially when it all, um, yeah, there was a day in particular where we kind of knew that we were going to be away from training um, and we had a sit down with all of the coaches and all the team and it was a very difficult one and I'm not going to lie, I was looking at flights, I wasn't really sure where my head was at um, and I spoke to my mum about it. Um, in the end, I think this is definitely the, the right decision for me, you know, this is the best place for me to be for training um, and ultimately when the league restarts, I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to get back into the country um, or if I'd have to go through a, a special quarantine and, and things like that, so that was definitely weighing on my mind. And I live with Sammy, um, who's my teammate. And once this all um, kind of started, the Trinidad borders shut, which is where she's from. Uh, so she had you know, no chance of getting anywhere near home. And I kind of knew that she was going to be staying here. And yeah, I didn't really want her to be in the house for months on end on her own. Um, so it, that kind of did weigh on my mind that it'd be nice to kind of isolate together and we could actually use the time you know, beneficially because we do you know play together a lot and um, when we're on court so yeah there was a lot of different factors um but I'm really glad that I stayed here um I think when I come out here in January I kind of know that I'm not going to see my family till September or October so that was already in my mind and you know I obviously miss home and I miss my family but I know that they're safe um and yeah it was kind of already my plan to not be with them for till September and October so yeah, it didn't really change too much for me. Obviously, I was making sure that they were safe and doing the right things. But yeah, I think this is definitely the place for me to be. Living with Samantha Wallace then, we know you're great friends and roommates usually. Lockdown though, less chance to sort of escape for each other. Has it all been plain sailing? Are you still friends? <laughs> we are still friends and I think we get on really well because we're so chilled. Um, you know, we can literally just do whatever we like. You know, she'll She's in her bedroom now, just cooking dinner. Um, we actually get along really well. We've lived together for, this is our fourth year living together now out here. So we actually complement each other really well. And, you know, we've got a lovely place to live so we can go out on walks right by the water. Um, and to be honest, it, there's never really any tensions with Sam. Um, yeah, we're just good friends. So it's actually been really nice not to be alone, um, which would, yeah, which would be really, really bad. But yeah, I'm, I'm glad I stayed here. Um, and she's a good person to isolate with. 
it, it's all well and good, isn't it? Keeping on top of that fitness, but speaking to some of the Super League teams and players over here, there's a worry about the sort of match sharpness and not being able to get out on court. I know you've got a net at home that you've been obviously practicing your shooting with, but is there any concern about those connections on court and not being able to quite maintain them and get them all firing like you'd like to? Oh yeah, I think that's always that's always a worry. Um, but I'm, I'm hopeful that we're going to have you know enough time before the season starts together as a squad and. You know, if we don't, if it's maybe a bit tighter than we want, then I know that the connections are already kind of in place from last year and the seasons before because, you know, this team has been together now for pretty much four years um, and we're building every year. Obviously, last year was the culmination of that and, and winning the championship. So I'm hopeful that the connections are still there, buried somewhere, and it won't be too hard to find them. Um, I'm not sure what we'll do if they're not there, but... Yeah, it's a, it'll be kind of a, a nice challenge, I think, to see how the team adapts to it and how the team can work around it. Because um, obviously we might not have that much notice before we get told that we're going to be playing. So, yeah, it's a tricky one. So when the season does start, you know, potentially end of June, maybe sooner, maybe later, do you have any idea what that might look like or, or how it might operate? We don't, honestly. And we're having, you know, chats with the, the Players Association and Netball Australia um, and it's still kind of up in the air and they're still having discussions about how they want it to look. And it's kind of going off government guidelines, whether they play a full season where you play everybody twice and then you do finals or you play everybody once, or you play like a, a world cup style, like a couple of um, short weeks and you like condense everything. So there's a few different options and we're not really sure um, what, where they're going to go. Um, I'm just excited to know that we probably are going to be playing. That's the, the main thing. I don't care how many games. I don't care how they do it. I'm just excited to be getting back on court um, and I'll leave the decision making to the powers that be. The possibility playing behind closed doors. How do you, how do you feel about that? Because it's a really mixed one, isn't it? Amongst, amongst all sports people, actually. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to lie, it wouldn't be ideal, you know, we love game day because of the crowds and, you know, especially the Swifts get amazing home crowds and um, it really does help and, you know, that's the, the buzz that you get um, playing professional sport. So it definitely will be different, um, but we're still going to be, you know, going up against the best, you know, week in and week out. So I'm excited to do that, even if the, there aren't any crowds there. Um, fingers crossed we could, but you never know. So, yeah. It's, of course, the same challenges that face the Suncorp that A and Z have got in New Zealand. They're postponed indefinitely at the moment. Uh, Vitality Super League over here in the UK that's going to be reviewed later on in, in, in mid, mid to late May. With all these major leagues having the same issues, do you think there's a way they could work together and, and come out with a, with a positive outcome for the future of netball, perhaps something like an international calendar or just working cohesively there? I mean, yeah, that would be awesome. And I think something that Netball's had over the last couple of days is momentum. And I think it's important that we don't lose that um, when, you know, this is all going on. And I think the teams that are being proactive um, and are putting things in place are going to come out of this the best. And, you know, ultimately, like, everyone's still going to love sport. Everyone's still going to want to watch sport. And I think it's the teams that know that and are putting things in place to make it still very watchable and make it approachable and, and getting it out there and, and keeping it within the public reach, even though people are very isolated at, at the minute. So, yeah, I think netball in particular, um, we've been on quite a wave since the Com Games and the World Cup. Um, and I don't want this to kind of, you know, stop that wave from continuing. You know, obviously the next Commonwealth Games is in England. So it would kind of, yeah, that's the, the end goal to, to head towards that and to keep the interest um, up before we get to that Games. Well, then away from coronavirus, what's it like normally playing for you in Australia? Because it must be you know, a dream come true, really. It is. Yeah. And I um, yeah. Once I knew that kind of netball was what I wanted to do, it was always the dream to play in Australia. And I'd seen other players, you know, Jeeva Mentor and, and Joe Hart and come out to this side of the world um, and play. And then when they came back to England, they were just completely different players and they read the game better. They were fitter and stronger. And yeah, I just knew that that was the place to be. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's very surreal to say that I've been here for four years now. Um, I didn't ever think that this was going to be my life and I'm very grateful that it is because um, when I was growing up I don't think I really see netball as a viable career because um, you know we didn't see it on the TV very much we didn't see it in newspapers um, and we didn't see you know girls going up to collect awards and things like that so it's definitely changed a lot in the in the landscape within five years I'd say so yeah it's it's very surreal to be out here and to be playing pro netball um, but yeah I definitely wouldn't change it it's kind of nice to have the balance 
between Australia and England, I get to have a nice cold Christmas, but a nice hot summer when I'm out here. So I kind of get the best of both worlds, I think. That sounds pretty idyllic. You did a um, start of the decade versus end of the decade post on Instagram at the end of last year, like so many people did. And yours, I've got to say, is definitely one of my favourite ones because start of the decade, there you are in like school uniform, you know, in your skirt. End of the decade, you're winning Commonwealth gold and the Suncorp title with the Swift. Um, how do you how do you process that last ten years? Oh, I, I honestly don't know. And oh god, yeah, that pleated skirt. I'm kind of regretting putting that on now. Um, yeah, it's been yeah, it's been a bit of a whirlwind. I'd say not even the last ten years, probably since. Uh, my first cap with England, which was 2014. Um, since then, it just seems to have gone 100 mile an hour super quick because, you know, I grew up in Cumbria in the country. Um, I was, you know, out of it. I was just playing my own sports um, and having a great time. And I didn't really know that much about the professional world. Um, and yeah, once I kind of got a taste for it, I just ran with it um, and haven't really looked back. And obviously the, the comm games and the Suncorp were the two pinnacles for me. Um, and yeah. So, I don't know. I think if you'd asked that girl in the pleated skirt, <laughs> she definitely wouldn't have said that's what she'd end up doing. But I think she'd be pretty pleased. I think she'd have bitten your arm off if you told her this could be your <laughs> life in 10 years' time. She'd be like, yes, please. And on that Commonwealth Games, I mean, it's been two years now. We are still talking about it. We still revel in it. There must have been so much belief amongst that group of players. Like you say, a special group of players with Tracy as coach. What was the atmosphere like amongst the team heading into the tournament? Yeah, it was a very special group. And I think there was a real sense of belief that we were going to win it. And nobody else thought that. Um, but I think we never left our bubble of belief. And, you know, we always thought that we were going to win it. And I think once we did, it almost felt like a relief, especially the, the semi-final game when we got to the final. That was the worst game ever. Like, I remember feeling so sick and just so nervous because that was always the game that we'd trip up on. Um, and yeah, just to finally to finally nail it and to get into the final was just a huge relief. And then I think the final, we just had fun and just enjoyed it. Um, and it obviously showed in the way we played. I'm glad you guys had fun and enjoyed it. It was stressful watching. <laughs> <laughs> if I watch it back, I genuinely like, I start sweating and I start getting like heart palpitations. I don't like watching any of it back. No, I'm not surprised. It was stressful, but the best kind of stressful viewing, obviously, with the result as well. It must be huge pressure then, really, or maybe England feel a little bit like they've come through to the side of pressure heading into Birmingham in, in 2022 when it's a home Commonwealth Games and you're reigning gold medalist. Oh, yeah, I mean, it would be amazing to retain the title. And I think, you know, we're, we're always going to come up against some strong sides. And I think Australians are obviously going to be very dominant and like the Kiwis who have had a good year. So... Yeah, it's going, to be t it's going to be tough, but I'm excited to try and, um, you know, take our title back and, and keep the, the reigning Commonwealth Champions title. Um, obviously, we'd love a World Cup as well, but we'll get to that one. Um, but yeah, I'm just excited. You know, the multi-sport events are so much fun um, and it's great to see, you know, netball um, on the world stage. So yeah, just heading into the, the home comm games, I think it's going to be mega. In terms of England then, when are we going to see you back in the red dress? Have you been speaking to Jess Thelby? I have, yeah. I've been speaking to Jess um, and, you know, I had some time off after the World Cup, as did a, a few of the girls. Um, and it's definitely needed. It feels like it's been nonstop uh, for the last cycle. But I definitely want to be back in the England dress sooner rather than later. And, you know, I think whenever the next time England plays, I'll be putting my hand up. So, yeah, I'm excited to, to get back playing for England. Um, and that's what I want to do. And, you know, that's a really important part of my career. So I needed a little break and it was nice to, you know, take that refresh, spend some time with friends and family around Christmas and come back out to Australia and start pre-season um, with the rest of the girls, which I usually don't do. Um, but yeah, I'm raring to go uh, when it comes to England. That is really, really good to hear. Does it feel different when you put the red dress on now? As you know, you're an established member of the team. It, yeah, it does. And to be honest, you saying I'm a, an established member, that sounds ridiculous because I don't, I don't feel like one sometimes. It feels like I only just came into the team and I'm a rookie still. So yeah, that, that does feel a bit different. Um, but I obviously, yeah, have played with the team for quite a while now and I do feel um, very confident with my role in the team and, and where I stand. And yeah, I just absolutely adore it, especially playing at home. Um, nothing beats it. And you know, the, the Roses fans are pretty crazy so yeah I just love it um, and I can't wait to do it again. You saw the, the, the pure craziness of the Roses fans at the World Cup after a couple of years of playing out in Australia how good was that as a netball homecoming? 
that was it was unbelievable honestly i had no words for it we had you know people waiting outside of our hotel you know there were hundreds of people like screaming when we were getting onto the bus um yeah it was very surreal and it kind of shows that the the journey that netball's been on because that definitely wouldn't have been happening you know four or five years ago so yeah they were amazing and we luckily got to meet a lot of them in the fan zone and you know we were signing autographs and taking pictures and yeah they just made liverpool really loud um, and really proud to be english so yeah i've just got nothing but good things to say about the Roses fans. And finally, what are your tips and advice for all the netballers stuck at home who are just desperate to practice? What can budding shooters be doing with all, even without a net? Yeah, even if you don't have a net, you can still be practicing your technique and your wrist flicks and all of that. Everybody's probably got a wall at home. And if you've got a ball, then you can do, be doing wall work. Um, I've been getting Sam involved. You know, if you've got tennis balls, you can be doing juggling, hand-eye coordination. Um, yeah, there really is no limit and you just have to be creative. Um, but yeah, I would say just have fun. Like This is a time to not be too stressed out and not be too worried about not training and things. Just do what makes you happy. And if that's shooting, if that's having a little pass, um, that's fine. I've been kicking a footy. I've been, you know, doing keepy uppies. That makes me happy. So I've been doing that. Um, and I think just keeping active, you know, don't sit inside all day. Uh, even though it's tempting, it's nice to get outside um, and have some fresh air. Uh, but yeah, I'd say just have fun and enjoy it. Helen, that's brilliant. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak to us. Awesome. Thank you.